Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I'm going to show you how to make a fire brick rocket stove. You know on this channel I have made a series of rocket stoves from concrete, concrete with perlite, concrete without perlite, this is a crack resistant concrete, straight up concrete, no armature, this one had an armature, to steel, here's my stainless steel production rocket stove called the Rocket King available on Amazon. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Even one that powers a pizza oven. So my hope with this particular rocket stove is that not only is it easy to build, it's fast to build, but it's also, because we're using fire brick, gonna be able to withstand the rigors of being a rocket stove very effectively. I'm also gonna use a couple of quick cheats or hacks on this as well. I've had a couple comments from in other videos suggesting using a burner grate from the side burner of a recycled grill for the pot riser on the top. And also using another piece from our salvage grill for a grate down here. And I've actually got this stacked up like this at the beginning here, because I wanted to show you um, in unstacking it how I chose to build this. That top brick in the back will need to be cut to size, but I've seen a lot of brick rocket stoves on the internet using the bricks horizontally, flat. I chose to use them vertically. There's plenty of surface area there to make this stable, especially we're gonna add some mortar in between them. It lets us have the verticality, the, the rise of the stove that's gonna be important for airflow. It also lets us use less bricks uh, to make it. So my hope is that this fire brick rocket stove solves a lot of the issues that we had with these. So I've got three bricks here straight up on the front, just for a nice, a smooth finish on the front. The storm's coming, so I'm gonna need to work fast. Then three bricks stacked vertically on this side. Of course, I'm gonna cut this brick here, but I want you to see how I have them stacked to start. I'm actually gonna deal with these gaps with some mortar instead of cutting the brick horizontally to fit. The first row of bricks is set up like this. So we have one all the way across the back, cover the back and then the sides and I stack that first set here to allow me to have a ledge on the front to, to set a brick across. This is our great level and I'm gonna cut this down a little bit so that it sits underneath the bricks cleanly. The rain is starting. And of course my base layer is three bricks stacked flat. And I did that just for stability. So the storm has passed. This rocket stove build is gonna take 17 fire brick. And I think I paid about $2.25 per brick. So I want a level and stable base. And this sand table is pretty stable, but I want it to be a little more rigid. So I'm actually gonna use some scraps of concrete siding that I have to go underneath the first layer of bricks. And a thinner piece for the back. Just a general check for level here. Close enough. I got the uh, music camp going on across the street again, so we'll have company emit from them today. Here's a little chumba wumba for you. I love this song. Although I don't think Content ID is gonna catch this one. Although by the end of the week, they're gonna have it down. It's just Monday. It's sort of Lil Burns version of School of Rock. It's pretty cool. All right, back to the project. I'm gonna put down first layer of bricks. All right, I've got this lined up. I'm gonna pull this off, grab my grate. It's actually lining up perfect for me. I've got this little divot right here that'll let the part that sticks out of the front not be open on the end. Happy about that. So let's mark this.
I'm using stove mortar that adheres to masonry or metal for that matter. It's good to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just noticing that this thing is not sitting level and it's because there's a little bump here on the grate that I need to grind off first. I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, that's nice and smooth and now I'll be able to level this grate. The front one's not gonna matter because it'll be hanging off the front edge of the bricks. I'm gonna lift this up first, put a stripe of mortar down so it has something to sit in as well as something on top. One thing to know about fire bricks is that uh, a home improvement store like Home Depot is probably not going to have them in stock. They will order them for you, but your best bet is to go to a true building supply store, not home improvement, but building supplies. So, lumber yard. They've got lots of space, they're more likely to have fire brick in stock. That's some nice adhesion going on there. It's hard to move that. The goal is to have a little bit of squeeze out when I put this brick down. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and butter this one a little bit. especially on this outside edge here that's gonna sit there. All right, got those set down nicely. A Little more squeeze out inside than I thought, but uh, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. With the bulk of that off, I'm gonna come back with the damp washcloth scrap and uh, wipe this down a little bit better. Got another storm threatening. Need to wrap this up. This is actually the most labor intensive part of this is right here. So I'm not worried yet. Nothing like a Georgia thunderstorm to add a little bit of excitement. All right, that's good enough for now. When this dries out a little bit more, I should be able to scrape off a little, the remnants that I can get to, and eventually they'll fall off uh, just with use. All right, let's start with the second layer of brick. I could very well just use this mortar for the, the second layer, but I have some that I can put into a caulk gun, um, a little bit more of an adhesive, and so I'm gonna use that for these layers, because I really don't need that much um, in between these layers of brick, just enough to hold them together. Fireplace mortar withstands 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. may go to the south of me. One optional component of a rocket stove is an air tube that brings in air up higher in the combustion chamber to add a little bit of extra oxygen to boost the burn that happens up above the fire. So I'm actually gonna use a conduit elbow that I'm gonna mortar into the back here and put to one side. It's actually gonna be warm by the fire and then it'll add a little airflow to the top. So I'm actually gonna put this in here. Since I'm gonna stack two bricks vertically in the back, I will need to fill in a gap. Part of that gap is gonna take place right down here. And I've got a couple of chunks of some thin fire brick that were left over from another project. Uh, you could use uh, the chunks you're gonna have to cut off of your full fire brick 
And I'll show you, I'm actually gonna brick this in using these on either side like that with some stove mortar. But I need something to support this tube while it's drying, so I'm gonna get up a little block of wood to put underneath that. I'm gonna stack two that'll allow me to get it out. Oh, the rain's coming. All right, the rain's starting to come down harder, but I want to get the brick in on top of this before I stop. All right, I built a quick rain shelter for this. All right, the rain delay is over. I decided to, rather than have two gaps, to just put one gap on this side of the brick. Um, and I'm gonna now fill this up with the mortar. and the last brick on the front. I'm gonna cut a custom block out of the full brick to fit all the way across the top because I don't want this large seam exposed to the top of the stove. It would, wouldn't look as neat. Nice. So I'm gonna use the stove mortar for this just because I, it's a little bit uneven and then the mortar will even that out and let me set the depth just right. Got this buttered up on the bottom. The last thing I'm going to do is fill in the gap back here. I'm going to have to fill the last of it by hand from the front. Alright, that'll do. It's the inside of the stove after all. Alright, so the body of the stove is finished. And I've got one more thing I want to make, and this is based on some suggestions I had on my other rocket stoves, which is a, a metal ash tray to slide in underneath here to make it easy to just pull out all of the ash once the stove is cooled. So I got some angle iron and some flat bar. I'm going to weld up a real quick ash tray for this.
right, so it's the next day, and it, I'm thankful that it's actually a sunny day. I had to work around the rain yesterday to avoid this getting messy. One interesting fact about the stove mortar is that it's heat cured. You can let it stand for at least an hour, but up to, well, they say overnight, so eight to 10, I'm guessing. And then you actually light a fire in the stove to cure the, um, the mortar. There's enough resistance in here for our little air pipe to stay up. That was my main concern, that it was still pretty soft. So that's solid enough that I can begin the curing process. If you need to go right away with the heat cure, just leave the block of wood in there that you're holding it up with. The, the mortar will cure faster than the block will burn. All right, so I'm gonna pull the lid off this, pull my blocks out, load up with some wood, and then we'll start up a fire. I'm actually gonna move my lid back here to be used as a heat shield. I'm gonna put it in my ashtray. So I'm gonna light this with uh, a little fire starter called the Rocket Booster. It's actually something I designed to go with the Rocket King stove. It fits right in the one of the cutouts in the front, but this of course will work to light any stove. It's just a mixture of soy wax and um, sawdust with a bit of candle wick in it. That flame is already angling backwards with the airflow beginning to go up the chimney. Wow. I love it. Of course, we got some smoke coming out of the top, but that should just be initially as the fire gets started. I'm gonna let it get good and started before I disturb this fire at all. I don't wanna mess with the structure of the fire that can, with small sticks like this, that can put it out really easily. Letting the fire start a little bit slower as well will be helpful uh, with the curing of the stove mortar. Of course, it's hard to start a fire slowly in a rocket stove. I already hear the rocket going. And the smoke is gone from the top as well. Just a heat plume now. A few flames are reaching the top of the stove now. And that reminds me, I hate to waste a good fire. So I'm actually gonna grab my grate. Of course, I grabbed the rest of the eggs we had in the kitchen and my big cast iron pot, I'm gonna put that on top. Eggs for me is just a good common denominator when it comes to testing these stoves out. And I love egg salad. Now I want to get this fire as big as I can.
The nice thing about this grate is it keeps the pot pretty low to the stove. Keeps that fire right up against the bottom of it. Some of these sticks just fell out of the tree. They still have a little bit of sap in them, which if you can get green wood burning, it's gonna burn just fine. Maybe even better because you got that sap in there to act as another form of fuel. In fact, when you're gasifying wood, that's what you're burning, that volatile organic compound, which is still liquid when it's sap. This may burn better than any rocket stove I've made. I didn't put a timer on this, but I've been burning for probably about seven minutes and I got a nice boil going and this isn't even covered. I wanted it to be more efficient, I could cover it. Another interesting thing is that that same burn time and I can put my hand on the side of this stove all the way up. A little bit of warmth down here. Amazing. The beauty of fire brick is it has a low thermal conductivity which makes it do what it's supposed to do, which is insulate. Another benefit of this ashtray, which is working great by the way, thanks for the suggestion, is that it's reflecting the heat upwards. It's grabbing those coals that fall through, letting them sit on top of the ash, and reflect that heat upwards. So it's not getting pulled down into the soil or into the concrete siding below. It's also going to make cleanup super easy. I also want to see if my air pipe in the back there is grabbing a flow of air. We're going to do that with Put a little stick in here, getting it smoking, and see if, see if we're pulling air through. It's pulling a little airflow, maybe not as much as I thought it would, but it is what it is at this point. It's concreted in. I could have added a few more eggs to this, but uh, I was out of eggs. This channel, of course, is called Green Shorts. The green element of that being my personal goal of living more sustainably. And a rocket stove actually fits into that for me being able to use found fuel that doesn't require any transportation, that burns efficiently, um, and is actually carbon neutral because we're using biomass that was created from the air, bringing carbon dioxide back into the air, it's actually carbon neutral. Yeah, I'd call that a rolling boil. So the more that I can not use energy or natural gas to cook, the more I can use sticks and twigs, that's greener. So that's the reason the why I do this, why I make rocket stoves, and why I'm sort of on this quest to find the perfect rocket stove. I'm gonna move the heat shield just for a second so you can get a sense for how high these flames are going. Oh yeah, I am happy with this build. I still love you guys, but I've got a new favorite. So let me just make this recommendation right now. If you can make a rocket stove yourself, this one is easy to make. It's not that expensive. It's gonna be extremely durable. And if you have to take it apart, you can, probably. And there's very little time to build this. The most complex part of this build was an optional piece, the ashtray. You could skip that entirely and make this thing in probably about 45 minutes. As always, our mission here at Green Shores is to help you see fire so you can be green and save a little green. Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for a new Green Shorts DIY video almost every Friday.